Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dave Wisniewski with Safer Arizona 2018 Cannabis Legalization Political Action Committee with some news and updates on our 2018 campaign to bring total cannabis legalization to Arizona. We've been drafting our initiative for the last four months, and over the last three weeks, we got stuck on licensing. Originally, we wanted a free market uh, to where all you need is your standard business licenses so you can start selling cannabis, similar to how tobacco is regulated. All you need is a transaction privilege license and any other additional licenses you need to uh, start selling tobacco, like, um, well, well, I don't know if you need a whole lot of licenses for tobacco, but let's say... Uh, you want to be an edible company, right? Uh, well, you would need your, your transaction privilege license to conduct the business, and you would need any additional licenses uh, like food handlers, cards, or anything else you need for that kind of business. So we're saying let's just use the existing uh, license structure in place. Well, uh, we had someone who was very influential in the industry approach us. His name was Dimitri Downing, and he was saying, well, hey, uh, if you guys have a free market, some of these dispensaries are going to be upset with you. They're going to come out against legalization because what you're doing is you're devaluing the value of their current medical marijuana license. Right now, they have some lottery they have to win and they have to spend buku money just to get a medical marijuana dispensary. And when they get a license, the value goes up. The license is worth uh, estimated over a million dollars. So if we legalize cannabis and there's a free market and the people are empowered, well, dispensaries lost control and now the people are empowered and they don't want to empower the people. Not all of them. I'm, I'm saying there's just a handful. There's a bunch of good dispensaries out there that want home cultivation. They want total legalization and they support us. But there's a handful of dispensaries that don't want us to have a free market. There's a handful of dispensaries that don't want us to have home cultivation. They would rather keep their current vertical monopoly and force us to go to them or be a criminal. And that's the way it is right now, for the, for the most part, unless you still have your, your grow rights from, uh, from Prop 203, which most people don't right now. So uh, moving forward, we finally came to a conclusion that we, no matter what we do, there's going to be some dispensaries that are going to come out against us because they don't like home cultivation, they don't want competition, and you know what? That's fine. You know why? Because they'd be coming out against us over greed, because they want to keep control. That's not a good look for you guys. So if you guys come out against us, some dispensaries, because we have home cultivation and you don't want people to grow cannabis, we're going to point you out and embarrass you because that's embarrassing. Cannabis saves people's lives and it should be allowed to, for people to grow adults 21 and over. So what we're doing is we have our, our, our initiative, it's almost done, and we went with the free market approach to where all you need is your standard uh, transaction privilege license. We're using the same licenses that already exist today, and the Department of Revenue is going to be distributing these licenses, and we have in our initiative that our localities and the Department of Revenue cannot discriminate against you just because it's a cannabis business. They have to treat it like any other business, toys, speakers, you know, audio equipment. It's your business. So um, that's where we're going with our initiative. So what we did was we sent it to our attorney yesterday and he's going to give us our final formatted version and it will be available, is what he says, by next weekend. So uh, that's about, about uh, a whole week from now. So he's, he's going to be working on it throughout the week. And uh, once we get that final formatted version, we're going to be putting it out to the public for the final proofreading. So if you guys want to see the version we sent to our attorney, that's going to be in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the PDF file so you guys can see it. Uh, moving forward, so when we get that initiative back, we are going to be uh, scrutinizing it, have a proofreading party because we don't want to have typos or we don't want to have a misspelled word that we're collecting signatures for. And then after we get that uh, final proofreading and everything looks good, we have to submit it to the Secretary of State for a legislative review, which could take two weeks to 30 days, which is like, ah, oh, we want to be collecting signatures now because we can be collecting signatures now, but we have this political process that we have to go through uh, before we can start. 
The reason why we want to get this legislative review is because they're going to let us know if there's anything that's unconstitutional because what we don't want to have happen is have our initiative pass and then taken down shortly after because it was unconstitutional. So that's going to take about 30 days uh, at the most. So... Uh, during that time, we're going to be reaching out and contacting all the volunteers who have signed up at saferarizona.com or have signed up on our, our sheets when we're out there recruiting. And we're going to be uh, putting you in our system, in our tracking software, and putting you on the list to get petitions sent to you. Uh, we have about 2700 bucks in the bank for shipping. We have enough paper to print 82,000 signatures worth of petitions already and about 300 volunteers signed up. So as soon as we file our initiative, we are going to explode. We're really excited. It's really awesome. We're really pumped up. We have not been in this good of a position before in our history. We, we, had, we tried in 2014 to get on the ballot, tried in 2016 to get on the ballot. We are more prepared now than ever before to start this campaign. So we are pumped up. So we're going to have um, until July, the early, early July 2018 to collect 150,000 valid signatures. Uh, we're aiming for 300,000 signatures to account for error. Uh, but the soonest we think we're going to, going to file this initiative for signature collection is going to be the end of January or the beginning of February, we're going to have about 17 full months to collect 150,000 valid signatures. We're looking to hopefully get over a thousand volunteers. And I think we're going to hit that thousand volunteer mark within the first couple of months, to be honest, because we're already at 300 and that's without even really, you know, grinding gears into it. I mean, we went out recruiting a couple of times, but, uh, we haven't really, uh, implemented our full-on recruiting program with all our, our volunteers yet. We were recruiting in our own little group, but once everyone else who has signed up starts recruiting, it's just going to explode. It's going to be awesome. I'm almost too excited. I'm so anxious that I'm banging my head against the wall because I want to be collecting signatures right now. And I know a lot of you guys want to as well. I feel you guys. I, I feel where you're coming from. So uh, that's where we're at. Next weekend, we're going to have that initiative out for you guys to proofread. Then we'll file it with the Secretary of State. Once we get it back, we'll file it for signature collection. And we are going to rock and roll. So that's all I got for right now, guys. You can, you can sign up as a volunteer or make a campaign contribution at saferarizona.com. Check out the initiative in the description below. Again, this was Dave Wisniewski reporting for Safer Arizona 2018 Cannabis Legalization Political Action Committee. Thank you.